What's up, everybody all around the world? It's Solace Kingdom there, Kingdom Fourth here, guys. All these videos on my YouTube, youtube.com slash Solace King Music. And guys, I want to come on here tonight and I want to talk about listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Guys, I want you to meditate on this. I know it's uh, late, you know, but if you're watching this later on on the replay, it's not late. But I want you to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and what he tells you to do. I want you to meditate on this one Bible verse. All right. It says in John 14, 26, it says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So, guys, when you're led by the Holy Spirit, I promise you, you won't be made, you won't make mistakes. I promise you, when you when you let him lead you and direct your path. Right. I see it says a man's way. You, you might it may seem right. Right. A way that you're going. It may seem right. But the end of that is death. Like, what, what is he talking about in Proverbs? Guys, you have to acknowledge God in what you're doing, in everything you do. Before I do these videos, I say, God, do you want, what do you want me to talk about? Right? Before I do a presentation, before I share somebody my business, I say, God, do you want me to talk to this person? Because everybody's not supposed to be connected to me. Everybody's not supposed to be connected to you. And I want you to learn how to yield to the Holy Spirit and listen to his voice so you don't make mistakes, right? You don't, you don't, there's mistakes that you're going to make because you're not yielding to his voice, because you're trying to do things on your own. But when you yield to his voice, you cannot make a mistake because you're going to be in his will. It says all things work together. So if I'm in his will, that means everything is working for my good. If I'm not in his will and I'm having pain, right? Pain, sometimes pain, sometimes pain is a clue that you're, you're not doing the right thing. But also pain can also be a clue that you're on the right track. But you have to hear his voice to understand, is this what you want me to do? Right? Is this, is what, is this what you want me to do? And I know this is what he want me to do. This is why I do it every day. And the reason I got on here, you know, you know late because, you know, I went out to eat with my grandma and, and family. We went out to eat. But... I just want you to meditate on this one Bible verse. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit, he's our helper, right? He's our helper. And what I'm doing is I'm learning how to yield to him. So when I make, when I, when I make, look, when I make moves, I'm not making wrong decisions because my inner man, right? I build up my inner man. I hear what the Holy Spirit is telling me. So when I go talk to somebody about my business, guess what? They're signing up. When I go for whatever, you're going for a job interview, you don't go to the wrong job. You don't go to the wrong business opportunity. You're not, I don't talk to the wrong people. I don't get on these videos at the wrong time. I'm on here at the exact time I'm supposed to be, be on here. I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing, right? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. The steps of a good man. What is a good man? A man that hears the Holy Spirit. A woman that hears from the Holy Spirit and does exactly what he says. Yield exactly to what he tells you to do. Did he tell you to build that business? Did he tell you to talk to that person? I made mistakes to where I went and reached out to people that I wasn't supposed to reach out to. It was when I was trying to do it myself, right? I'm just thinking. But... It's those God connections when he brings people to you and he kind of bring both of you guys together. It's not one person just coming to you. It's kind of both of you attracting each other. If you really think about it, it's both of you attracting each other. You have something I need. I have something you need. I never look at a, a connection as if it's one sided. It's never one sided. It's always. And if it is one sided, then that, that's not that's not God. Whenever he connects somebody, y'all both have something for each other. Y'all both have a difference. Whenever it's somebody, you think about it in a relationship. Two, y'all both have a difference. If y'all both were the exact same, y'all wouldn't need each other. One of you might be wiser than the other one. One of, my, one of you might be a great investor. And one of you might be a great person that knows how to get wealth. Right, it knows how to attract a large, a large amount of wealth, but the other one might be a great money manager. Might be really wise with making the money multiply, right? With managing it so you don't spend it all. In Proverbs, it says a fool squanders, spends all the money as fast as they get it. 
But guys, what I want you to do, I want you to meditate on this. None of these videos about me is all about Jesus, all about God, all about the Holy Spirit. And I love, I love God. So I'm doing these every day because like, this is my assignment. This is what he wants me to do. Right. So in John 14, 26, it says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, another name for the Holy Spirit is the helper. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance at all that I have said to you. So, guys, I want you to meditate on that. I want you to have a blessed, blessed night and, and get in God's will. Ask him, God, where do I belong? I promise you, when you're in the right environment, you will not be tolerated. You will be celebrated. You, if, if, you're, if you're in your God-given purpose, you will not be tolerated. You will be, cele you will be celebrated and accelerated. You will, not de you will not decrease. It's impossible for you to decrease when you're, when you're seeking the King of Kings, when you're in his purpose. It's impossible. But if you're out of his will, everything is not going to work for you. And you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it. And like I said before I get off here, just because you're going through attacks, that doesn't mean that's not God's will. Because attack is proof that the enemy knows that your, your, your breakthrough is here. But sometimes pain can also come from doing the wrong thing. But you got to recognize it. It's wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to recognize what can I change and what can I not change. That's wisdom. What can I change? Okay, God, give me the peace because I can't change this. I can't change my nose, right? Unless I go get, you know, like surgery, all that. But I'm talking about like you can't change who you are. This is who you are. But I can change this. I can change my finances. You, you get what I'm saying? You're mature. I can change. What, what can I change? So God, give me the peace to know that that to give me the peace to know that I can't change this. But also give me the courage to know what I can change. That's wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to discern differences. Right from wrong. To know when somebody is happy, when somebody's sad, when you're on the phone with somebody. Have you ever been on the phone with somebody? And you didn't know why they were silent. Silence is still sound. Who have you recognized? Who pain do you feel? What do you hate? What, what is something that you, tr you, you just hate? Is it poverty? Is it seeing somebody on the corner poor? Is it who, who success? Who success? Who 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 around you, if they don't succeed, does it bother you? If somebody around you does not succeed, do you feel their pain? Who who is that? I know for me, if I don't see if my parents are not succeeding, it, it bothers me because I love them. I want to see them blessed. Whose pain do you feel? That's a sign that you're supposed to heal it. I promise if you learn how to solve enough problems for people, you will never be without wealth. If you learn how to solve enough problems for people, you will never be without wealth. It's a, it's a principle of God. The more problems you solve, the more finances you get. The more problems you solve, Bill Gates, he, saw, he, saw, he, saw, he solved a lot of problems. He still is. Everybody uses the computer. Look, we're they're using the phones. The people that created Facebook, Mark, right? He, he solved the problem. Facebook is awesome. We use it every day. It's constantly getting better, right? It's an awesome idea. God gave him an idea. He acted on it. Everybody's using it. He solved problems for people. People are connecting with people in different countries. I got friends that I met from Zimbabwe, from Thailand, New Zealand, different countries through Facebook. He solved problems. You are created to solve problems. Say this, I am a solution. I am a solution looking to solve problems. That's exactly who you are. But you got to find out 
what problems are you here to solve? It could be investing. Maybe you are somebody that can learn investing and help other people learn it quicker. Maybe you're an author, a book author, and you can teach other people how to write books. What is your assignment? What do you, what do you absolutely love to do? Nobody pays me to get on these videos. I love encouraging people. Why? It's what God gave. He put it in me. I encourage myself all day. Why not get on a video and encourage other people? I speak over myself every day, all day almost. Guys, this is this is how you know whatever this this is how you know what you should be doing. Whatever you truly truly whatever you truly truly went through. Whatever pain you went through. For instance, Dr. Mike Murdoch, right? He loves to talk about wisdom. When he was younger, he went through a lot of issues in, in, in school, right? He, he went through a lot of things. I want you. I want you to think about this. People who talk about finances and who who have a, achieved great financial results, usually, if you look at their past, they went through a lot of poverty. People who went through, like Benny Hinn, who went through sickness when they were younger. They hate sickness, and what is the solution? He, he he has a healing ministry. It's not a coincidence. Think about what you went through as a child in, in your younger years or what you're going through now. It's probably the opposite. You're probably going to solve that. What what did you really go through? Were you did you experience homelessness when you were younger? You hate homelessness homeless now. You hate seeing people homeless, and you have a drive to help other people. To not be homeless. Just think about the things you went through. And what you want to solve. It, it's, it's pretty much related. Because I remember I was. My family we were homeless. And I hate it. When, when I was younger. I hate it. Now I hate when I see somebody homeless. I have compassion for them. And I help them. What is it something that you went through when you were younger? You probably hate it too. That's a clue that you're, that's a problem you're supposed to solve. It's right there in front of you. It's right there inside of you. Your, your assignment on this earth is right, is right in front of you. you. You actually live through what you're supposed to be solving. Why am I encouraging you? Because I get discouraged. I've, in my past, I've gotten discouraged a lot. But God showed me how to always encourage myself. And that's something I'm here to solve. To help people always be encouraged. Think about what you went through. See, whenever you see somebody teaching on something, they've been through the opposite of what they're teaching. They've been through the, the problem. That's how they got to the solution. That's how they... The problem... Going through the problem helps you qualify to be the solution, to get to the solution, and to be the solution for other people. Anybody that's a great investor had to go, they had to lose money. They lost money. And, now, and, and it taught them how not to lose money so they can help other people not lose money. Anybody, a, a great football player. Basketball players, singers, songwriter. They went through these challenges to get to where they are. Any great minister, any great pastor, T.D. Jakes. His church didn't start off like that. It was small. He went through so much pain. But to get to where he's qualified to help other people. And I want you to just think about what is it? What is it that I absolutely hate? That's a clue what you are here to, to solve. It. What, ask yourself, what do I hate? Do, do you hate filthiness? Do, do, you, do you hate 
hearing artists on music curse. I hate that. And guess what? I make music. All right. I make Christian and Christian and gospel contemporary music now. I, I hate I hate hearing curse words. It's a clue to my assignment to spread positive words. What do you hate? I hate, like I told you, I hate seeing homeless people. I hate poverty. It's so much money being created, I think everybody could be millionaires. Everybody. And you could create your life how you want it. What do you hate? I hate seeing my parents, they work so hard with their businesses, I hate to see them fail. Because I love my parents. That's, a, that, that, that's one of my assignments. That's one of your assignments too. If you have your parents with you, honor your parents. It's, in the Bible it says it's your Christian duty to honor your parents. It's my duty to. What do you hate? And when I say hate, I'm not talking about... You get it. You're mature. I'm not talking about like, like, actually, I want to beat you. No, I'm talking about like, what, what, what makes you mad? What, what brings out that passion in you? I can't take this no more. What brings that out? That's a clue that that's what you're supposed to be solving. It's a clue that that is what you're supposed to be doing. It's a clue. Write it down, put it on paper, and work on your assignment every day. Work on what God has put in you to change, whatever you, you hate. That's a clue you're supposed to change it. See, somebody who's been abused hates abuse. And what do they do? They create something to change it. Whatever you are going through, that's going to be, it's going to, it's clearly, it's going to be something you're going to have the solution for. I'm telling you, somebody who survives cancer, my aunt, I'm so grateful. She didn't die. She, she survived cancer. She's cancer free. She hates, she hates it. He hates it. She wants to solve it. It's a clue. She wants to, they, 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 people. Whatever you go through, guys, you hear, you know exactly what I'm saying. You're, you're, you're smart. I hope this is getting you to think and write it down. Write down your assignment on this earth so you can work on it every day. Are you see me? I'm making these videos every day. I don't need nobody to tell me. I don't need nobody to check on me. This is how you know you're, you're doing what God told you to do. You're in your assignment. You do it willingly. If you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. When, when you're doing what God told you to do, you don't need no extra encouragement. You don't need nobody to tell you you're on the right track. Because it's something inside of you that has compassion for the solution that's coming out of you. For other people. See, the reason I'm doing these videos is because I've been where you are and where other people that's watching this are. I felt discouraged. I felt discouraged. That's what's qualifying me to be in, an encourager because I have to encourage myself. And I still do. Your problem serves a purpose. Your problem, it serves it serves a purpose. It serves a purpose. So guys, I just want you to dwell on this. I want you to know in John 14, 26, the helper, the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, because it's time for you to get in your assignment. See, businesses. See, look, I'm in a business, right? But that's not my purpose. It's not my purpose. It's a vehicle to help my purpose. But it's not my purpose. See, you, you got to know what's going on. You got to have wisdom to know, understand what's going on. Your business, you, you got to see, ask God, say, is this my purpose? 
Because yes, you can have multiple businesses, but all of them are not going to be your purpose. You have one purpose. You have a purpose. And you're going to have other things that help assist that purpose. But you got to know what that purpose is. And you got to know what those vehicles are. What those resources are that are assisting that purpose. See, my purpose is I, Silas Kena Forth, impacted one million lives, right? One million people, right? To, to walk in their God-given purpose in life. And to overcome their fears. Why? How? By following Jesus. Whether it's through business. See, business is a vehicle. Whether it's through music, music is a vehicle. Whether it's through talking about the word through here, ministering, it's, through, it's a vehicle. But it's one, it's one purpose. Whether it's through books, but it's a vehicle. My book is a vehicle to help assist my purpose. Whether it's through clothing, it's a vehicle. Whether it's through talking to people, just, you know, I see on the street or walking, wherever I meet somebody, it's a vehicle. But every time I meet somebody, I want to talk about Jesus. I want them to know about him. Whether I say his name or not, they're going to see it in my actions. They're going to see it in my actions. Be a doer of the word and not just a hearer. Deceiving yourself. Be a doer. When people see me, they know I follow God. Remember in the Bible it says the wicked, they they, they go like this, they, they, they grinch their teeth at the righteous. I, I see people doing that when they see me sometimes. That's just, that's just confirmation from God to, to let me know I'm on the right path. <laughs> they're supposed to do that. It's the word. It, they're supposed to do that. The darkness don't like the light. I was in the darkness. I didn't want to come to the light. But I'm so glad I did. See, when you're in darkness, you don't want the light because the light is going to expose everything that's going on. And those in the dark, they want to hide. But the light, this is what the light does. It exposes everything. It superimposes over darkness. Leaving nothing but light showing. When you cut off the light and then cut the light on, cut off the light, you can't see nothing. You cut on the light, you see everything. And that's what I'm here for, to cut on your light. Whether it's through, whether it's cutting on your vision, not just your eyes, but I'm talking about your vision of why you're here on the earth. Whether it's waking up, cutting on your purpose. Whether it's inspiring you. Right? Because so, if you're not inspired, you're, you're discouraged. And that's not light. That's darkness. So when I inspire you, I turn your light back on. Whether it's through healing. He said you should lay on your, your hands on the sick and they shall recover. These signs shall follow you that believe. Right? Well, right? The eyes of the blind will be open. Whether it's physical or spiritual. I will lay my hands on the sick, whether it's physical or, 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 or spiritual. You could be spiritually sick. You could be spiritually sick. It's not just outside. The light is not just outside. It's inside. It starts inside. So, guys, I want you to meditate on John 14, 26, and I want the Holy Spirit to begin to direct your path. I don't want you... To ever chase after anybody ever again in your life. Never chase after blessings. Never chase after business partners. No, I never do that. I share it. And if they want it, they'll get it. Because when, when I saw, look, when you see opportunity, you chase it. You go to it. The opportunity never chases you. you, you when you see it, you want to do it. When you see something, when you see opportunity that, that, that you've been wanting to do all your life, nobody has to convince you to do it. You have to want to do it. I want to do these videos. 
God didn't have, he don't have to chase me to do this. He told me, he showed me the opportunity. And I, I, I'm chasing him. Chasing after God all day long. He showed me the light. If I seek him first and live righteously, all these things will be added unto me. As long as I seek the Lord, I shall always prosper. If I give, it shall be given back to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall men, shall women, shall all humans give unto me. Because the same measure that I give, it should be given back to me. If I love, I will receive love. If I hate, I will receive hate back. It's a, it's a principle. It's a law. So guys, I want you to meditate on this. And I'm, I'm done. Have a blessed night. I'll be back on here tomorrow. Every day. See, God hates liars. He hates liars. He hates liars. If you agree to do something for God. Now, you could agree. Look, I could be doing these videos and then God could tell me to stop doing them. But I haven't heard that. For, I hear keep doing them. I hear keep going on. Every time I come on, he gives me something to say. I don't write this stuff down. I just get on and I put it on my YouTube. It's all his grace. All his love. Guys, I encourage you to get into your assignment. Ask God, say, God, get what is my assignment on this earth? What is my purpose? Because, guys, look, you can make money easily, anytime. But are you happy with what you're doing? You, you want to have money coming in, but you want to be happy. You want to be happy and prosperous. That's what God said. It says in Psalms 128, it says, blessed is the man who obeys the Lord, who lives by his commands. He shall be it says he should be happy and prosperous. He should be happy and prosperous. Happy, then prosperous. Happy and prosperous. Whatever you're doing, you if you're not happy doing it, then why are you doing it? You could be at a job and get paid. Right? You could be at a job and get paid. But are you happy there? I, I would, me, personally, I would rather be doing my God-given purpose. Than to be sad with money. I'd rather be happy. I'd, I'd rather be happy than sad with money. I'd rather be happy because if I'm happy, I'm telling you, it's, it's the greatest feeling on earth. It sucks to be sad. It sucks to be depressed with money. You don't you don't want to you don't want to live like that. You want to be happy and prosperous. And when you get in your assignment, money flows like a river. When I did the book, my light, the light, people want to buy it. I give it out too. I give it out. But when you in your assignment, money flows like a river. It flows like a river. And I'm working on that. I'm asking God, God, let me get, I want to be completely in your will. I want to do my purpose every day. And guys, when I do these videos, I feel so good. I feel so good that I've, I've sowed seeds into your ears. That goes into your heart because whatever you hear, it goes into your heart. You see, hear and heart, it starts off the same. Hear, heart. It starts off the same. Whatever you hear goes into your heart. So when you hear me talk, I want to make sure I'm giving you positive juice for your heart. So when you get off of here, you're feeling 10 times better, 100,000 times better. You feel like you can do it. You feel like you can do all things through Christ. You feel like, actually, you know what, Solace? Something good is going to happen. You're right. I am going to see a manifestation. I see you doing it, young brother. You're 21. You're 21 and you're staying encouraged. You're encouraging me. Excuse me. So, guys, just obey God. Obey him and I promise you, I promise you, I promise you it's a blessing for obedience. You might not see it. So when I first started doing these videos, guys, I wasn't, my, my, I didn't have any income. And now God is sending income from all over places. All right, my business had went out that I was in when I first started doing these videos last year. 
But as I keep seeking him, he keeps adding things. And, you know, to, to maybe to you, you might not see every, you know, it, you might not see change right now. You're like, God, when is something going to change? I promise you, you seek him. If you just stay patient and keep seeking him, time, give yourself time. Give yourself time. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in all things, every time, all day, if you, if you got some on your heart, pray. Come to him with prayer and supplication. Make your, your requests known to God. Like Jabez did. He made his requests known to God. And what did God do? He gave him his, he granted his request. He said, oh Lord, bless me indeed. Say this with me. Oh Lord, bless me indeed. And remember, you have to have faith when you're saying this. Because it's impossible to please him without faith. Anyone that comes to him must believe he exists. And that he is a rewarder to them that sincerely, that diligently seek after him. So when you're saying this, you got to believe. Say, God, I mix this with faith. Oh Lord, bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Keep your hands upon me. That no evil can harm me. That it may not grieve me. That it may not cause me pain. And God granted his request. Guys, the reason Jabez said that prayer was because he was born out of pain. His name, he was born out of pain. And he said, God, I don't want to be pain to my family. I don't want to be pain to the people around me. So bless me. And God saw his heart and what he was saying. And he says, you're right. And he granted it. So guys, be blessed. Meditate on uh, John 14, 26. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Synchronize you into the God's perfect will. I pray for an Issachar anointing. So you know exactly what to do. So you know exactly what you should be doing at all times to fall upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Later.